All right, folks, here we go. Uh, turning on the Torbach PCNC lathe. Unfortunately, this is a mystery metal. It was a piece of one and five eighths, which is perfect, the exact OD that I wanted, but uh, some idiot, most likely yours truly, forgot to label it. I'm usually really good about that when I put it back in our round bar stock uh, scrap drawer. So, oh well, we're turning, uh, you saw in the cam tool path, but we're turning at about a thou per rev. It's the Tormach, um, it's the Tormach, uh, insert that they sell with their, their metal steel cutting with their lathe. You can actually see, I can see through the window here. It's making a chip. Um, I don't know, what could this be? It could be 1018, it could be 8620, could be 12L, actually I don't think it's 12L14 because I don't think I've bought any that thick. Um, what else, it could be 4140, but regardless, it's cutting fine, so no worries. The camera that's looking straight on is uh, the L-series lens on the 70D that I took the window out of the side of the machine. Um, it's, I don't know if I like this, you or not. Well, I kind of like it. The coolant just makes it tough. It makes it tough on the front window and uh, it's not so much even the camera getting dirty. Yes, liquid on the lens is a problem. It's just, um, just messy. So I'm still learning, figuring it out. I want to build one of those Spindex windows that automatically keeps it clean. That would be really fun. Uh, I think this is the, yeah, okay, one more. I think this is the finish pass here. I don't feel like doing it right now, but one of the cool things about the Tormach is if you do open the uh, door, the cabinet door, yes, it will stop the lathe, but you can then start it right back up, uh, which is a really nice feature. You hear the constant surface speed slow down as we get towards the outside, and that's it. All right, here we go. Stormox Superfly, 1200 RPM, seven inches a minute. Taking a cleanup pass, that should get us to a nice square finish. As you can see, we're holding it with a V-block, easiest way to hold round geometry. You gotta be careful, you can still pinch it, especially with softer materials here will be fine both because of the steel and we don't have to clamp with crazy high pressure and exterior surface, you know, minor things aren't going to hurt it, uh, anything. Leaves a great finish. All right, here we go. Lakeshore Carbide four flute quarter inch end mill. We're ramping in at, uh, the helical plunge at 12 inches a minute, 3300 RPMs, cutting at 15. This is the same end mill we did the video series on 4140 pushing it to the max that was I thought really fun and I'm excited to work with Carl Moore on some instructional tooling videos you can hear that no strain at all as it's plunging or helical plunging into that which is great they're going fast enough to actually make a chip you're not rubbing and wearing out the tool awesome and now we're really cutting look at that folks awesome Lots of people ask me, can the Tormach cut steel? Absolutely. Can it cut it as fast as a machine that costs six times as much? No. But it can cut steel and it can cut it beautifully. Look at that. I mean, you're making a real chip. You're dumping the heat into the chip. You're getting great service finish, tool life. It looks pretty. It feels right. Sometimes it's just confidence. It's knowing that you've got a you know, set of software, a machine, and your own skills that can actually make it cut right. You can see those little high-speed machining tool passes, it's ducking into the pockets there, it's trying to optimize the chip load, not bog down. Look at those little things. Pretty cool, right? It's what you see on, you know, really, really fast linear way machines, and it is really impressive to watch, but hey, we're doing it here, even if it is a little bit of a slower version. wonder how that's going to look in the uh, L-series lens. Oh yeah, you can see it. Sweet. Okay, Tool 76, this is the same tool from Lakeshore Carbide, except it is only 3 16 in diameter. No problem at all. You're taking a, just the slightest skim cut, and you know, because we are 
coming into some full width material contact, even though it's thin, you know, in theory that is, it, well it is, in, not in theory, it is actually impacting tool deflection. I doubt we'll see it here, but it is something to think about if you uh, wanted a optimal uh, uh, surface finish or absolute optimal on holding tolerances, you would want to leave more material and rough out the webbing that's left and then come through with one finish pass. But remember, when you're only cutting five thou thick finish pass, you actually need to go a lot faster to maintain that uh, chip load. And that's a whole other conversation. But this is working great. All right, half inch twist drill. I switched the Torvox spindle into the low gear, which is, I think the low range there is 80 RPMs, high is 2000. You do get more torque here, because we're only turning at 480 RPM, three inch a minute with a full retract plunge. But look at that, folks. Beautiful drill. You're making a chip, it's evacuating out, you're not hearing squealing, you're not hearing noise, the machine isn't fighting you, it's not mad. You guys know, when you run drills at the wrong speeds, it's a mess. They squeal, they, they, they chatter, they, they, they bitch at you. And this looks great. Five eighths twist drill, and this is where you really need spindle horsepower, folks. Seriously, um, the numbers get crazy. If you go into like say one or two or three inch twist drills, which is not common, especially nowadays uh, with various drilling technologies, but let me tell you, it takes a lot of oomph. So we're obviously, we were at half inch. We're getting a little bit of squeal, but I'm fine with this. Actually, it looks great. We're drilling, going from 0.5 to 0.625, so it's 62,000 per side, 1 8 inch total. Looks great, looks great. But now the question is, in theory, we've got to ream or bore this out another few thou because the shaft we're trying to fit, fit it over is 5 eighths. Now, twist drills usually drill a little over, so we might actually be okay, but I've got a little, um, uh, I'd call it an ace up my sleeve, but you're gonna laugh at me because it's, uh, it is, uh, it's nothing to brag about. It might work, which means the result is braggable, but the tool itself, not braggable. So you know those tools that you're so proud to have you know, handed down from your father or your grandfather, you know, made in America, you can just, it's like the cool packaging, it's just pride and craftsmanship. This isn't one of those tools. What it is though is cheap. We're gonna see if we can make it work. It is the $70 minus 20% coupon, blah, 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 Harbor Freight adjustable reamer set. Um, this is the essence of junk tools, but uh, guess what? It was, like I said, uh, I think 70 bucks with tax or something out the door or less. And I, I, need, I wanted to have these because in a pinch, I can't, I can't justify or afford a full set of actual adjustable reamers. They'd be hundreds if not thousands of dollars. So we're going to slide this up and down until we get it to be about 628, so two or three thou over the nominal. And we're gonna throw it in here and see how she works. Okay, so I loosened this one and tightened this one, which basically slides these down a, a tapered shaft that thins out. So that reduced the diameter. So they started at like 650. And I think I got it pretty close. If we kind of pinch it on here and roll them backwards. I was getting 628. See if it repeats. Yeah, 628. I think I had them at a little bit of an angle here, trying to hold it for the camera. Well, I'm comfortable offline when I was playing with it that it was at 628. Okay, we know the hole is about an inch and a half deep, so I set my Z0 right at the top here. We're not going to go more from the tip of that tool. We're not going to go more than 1.3 inches down, 1.4, and that is a weakness of this tool is we have a lot of area here that's not going to be uh, reamed out, but uh, let's just see what we get. <laughs> at least it looks like it's turning straight. Actually, maybe I take that back. Yeah, we'll see. Well, that's not good. Um, we definitely cut. Unfortunately, we're not cutting very deep uh, because of this extra space here. Hmm. I think I'm going to take it out and see how it fits, and then we'll worry about what the next step is. Well, here she is. 
Uh, I've certainly made uglier parts before. I think it looks pretty good. All that matters, though, is this. <laughs> yep. Oh, yes. Look at that. Wow. Okay, now, I, one thing I guess I didn't really think about is, is that going to be enough chucking power? Should I have made that into a hex? Um, let's see. Uh, here we go. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Well, don't look at that. Actually, let's charge the battery. All right. Freshly charged battery. Uh, we know it goes down. Let's see if it goes up. Oh, yeah. Well, not happy. Down, no problem. She'll go up, but she doesn't love it. But that wasn't necessarily the test. The test was, does this work? And it works great. So that's a win, folks. I hope you enjoyed that Wednesday which it, it is, I am flushed because it is really humid today. It's been raining. Um, hope you enjoyed it. The model for this will be on Patreon, but look, I, it didn't work like I wanted it to with the GrabCAD being turnkey. So if anybody wants this and they don't want to support us on Patreon, shoot us an email. We'll send you the um, Fusion 3D file. Judd says hello. That's a wrap, folks. Appreciate the thumbs up, the comments, the likes, the shares. Take care. See you next Wednesday.